Welcome to Retro Scale Modeling for my next build I'm building this AMT kit of the Star Trek USS Enterprise B. Now the uh, scale is 1, 000, 1 to 1000 and um, th this build I will be lighting up so I'm going to be using LEDs and LED strip lights to light it up and um, it's also going to be in uh, a few different parts. So I'm going to start off with the saucer section, then move on to the hull, the warp nacelles, then putting it together, and then decaling. The uh, decals on this are all going to uh, later on. It'll be a combination of what comes in the kit and uh, my own decals as well. So I hope you enjoy this build. So let's jump into it. So the first thing I do in this kit is uh, to drill the holes in the saucer section for the lights. Now unfortunately these kits don't come with any markings on, on it for where the holes go. But um, I found a lot of Trek from Trek Works. I'll put a link in for you uh, to follow them about how to go about it. Basically you put the decals on first then drill your holes into them. So I've already put the decals on because see they're pointing with my cocktail stick and then I'll get on to drilling them. So I'm using my pin drive and uh, just gently pin it up to it. Start slowly, then twist until uh, you form the hole. And it's the same again for the location lights uh, on the source section. Once you um, drill your hole, open them up slightly by placing your um, hobby knife in and just twisting it around to you slightly increase the hole size. The bottom part of the source section for the location holes, you want them to be in the, the same uh, place as the top part obviously. So what I did was I clamped both sections together and then, then used my pin drive to go into the original hole and go straight down to the bottom part of the saucer section to create the hole. That way they'll be in an exact position from the top. There you can see that. Well, that's all the holes drilled in for both parts of the saucer section. So as I said earlier, I'm just putting in my hobby knife and uh, just opening up the hole slightly. Because I'm putting in lights in, you want to uh, do a process called light blocking. So what I've got here is just some acrylic black paint and I'm painting it on roughly and loosely, just all over the inside of the saucer section. Then once you've done that, just check for any light please coming through the surface. So I, I use my, my lamp just to see if there's any light coming through. You can see there's a little bit there where my thumb is. And once that's dry, you want to repaint it again um, white or silver works as well. That's to reflect the light around the saucer section. So i am got that to do on the hull as well, as you can see. So the next stage is think about lights. Um, what I've got here is... Um, LED strip lights which you can see in threes there and some LED 3mm red and green diodes and um, what I'm doing I'm just positioning in, into where I would like the lights first of all. To wire them uh, take a piece of wire and gently cut off the sheaf of the wire before I, I do anything else. These LED strip lights come in a big reel of 5 meters and they can be cut into sections of three. That is why I've got the sections of three there. There's little brass points, metal points that you cut through so that you're not going to break a terminal. Next stage is to put some flux onto the uh, connection points of your LEDs and then take uh, a little piece of solder and um, solder a, a dot onto the connection points. And then for the last, just um, heat up your, the, the solder that you put on the connection point and push in the wire. On these strip lights they have a positive and negative uh, markings on the side of them so you won't get uh, mixed up which is going to be which side is which. Just be careful when you're doing it, it's easily uh, to get turned around. And I've connected all the wires to the process you just saw and then just securing it down initially with a little bit of tape. Now it's time for the LEDs. Now these LEDs, as I said, are three millimeters. The uh, stem that you see at the bottom there, the LED, there's a long one and a short one. 
Now, all these LEDs will need resistors put into them. Now, resistors um, have got different values and calculations on them. You can find um, really good tutorials and charts um, how to calculate the value of your resistor. It's all to do with the colour bands on the resistor. Uh, the the equation is called OHMS, O H M S, but it's really easy to um, figure out how to do. These resistors are 470s. Now, they're the most common resistor for these LEDs. So, if you just want to buy a bunch of 470s uh, and, and do your basic LED lighting, you, you'll be fine. So, first of all, you take the longer part uh, of the prong on this, slightly um, pull it out. Then take your resistor and, and the wire just wrap it around the leg that you pulled out on on the slightly longer leg. And then once you're happy with that, just a little bit of solder or on the connection you made. And when it's cooled down, I've attached them, the two legs, to two wires that I connected to the LED strip lights. Now those two wires I didn't um, connect to anything because they're getting connected to the LED. So I just uh, take the wire, wrap it around the, the prongs, uh, the positive going to the longer leg and the negative going to the shorter leg. And once they were wrapped around, just a little bit of soldering on them, and then put a plastic sheath on, bring it up to your joint, and just use your soldering iron to shrink the sheath down. Well, these sheaths you can get anywhere, from electrical stores, eBay, things like that. They're just little tubes that go on, and once you apply heat, they shrink down on onto uh, the area, protecting the resistor and your joints. So I'm just measuring up another sheaf here. Just cut it to length, and put it on. And once you're happy with it, the fitting, just do a simple light test uh, to see everything's working. Now, anytime I do something new to um, an LED light or whatever, if I'm adding a, a piece of wire or a bit of glue, a bit of solder, whatever I do, each time uh, I test the lights to make sure they're still working. That way, you can, it's easily a backtrack to see if you've gone wrong somewhere. So now for the red and green lights, I am, I'm putting in flashing LED lights for this. Um, people can't control them with motherboards and things like that. Or if you don't mind the flash rate, you can just get uh, pre-wired uh, flashing LEDs, which I have here. Now, the, these are getting wired up slightly different. I'm having to attach extra wire on um, to act as the circuit for the inner lights you see there. So. I've just um, cut off a bit of sheath and put the two bare wires together, twisted them and then uh, soldered them together. That process is called tinning. Then uh, I'll put them in place and solder them on just uh, the same way as I did with the LED strips. And then it's um, onto the strips. Now, if um, You've added some extra lights, which I have done here, and I've already pre-soldered uh, them. It's okay to do it on the model, just be careful that no hot excess is going on. But you should be okay, because it doesn't stay very hot for long. So again, just heating it up and pushing in the wire. So that's all the wires in place. Uh, time to give it a light check to make sure everything's working. And you can see the red and green flashing there. The two red ones at the bottom, those are the plain LEDs I put in, and those are for the um, impulse engines. Now, I um, for light blocking, unfortunately I didn't have this on camera, I used a, a piece of clay, and plasticine actually this one, just to go around the flashing LEDs, uh, so the light is only going to come through um, the holes that you created earlier on. That's quite important, uh, so you don't get any light bleed off flashing on all the other windows. And once all is done, as you can see there, I'm just securing everything now with a little bit of hot glue. Uh, I like to put a bit on the connection points as well, just in case there is any movement, you don't want them to break. So a little bit of hot glue on it just keeps that from happening. I've left some of the tape on, there's no need to take it off. Um, 
you may as well keep on and keep the wires secure. After checking with the kit out, I realised that there was a couple of holes that I hadn't drawn yet. These are the impulse domes at the top and just drill a little hole for the light to come through. And at the edge of, of the model, well, the back of the model, there's um, a little glass panel for uh, the impulse engine. Now that's solid clear plastic. So I, I had to uh, drill a little hole in that and opened it up with my knife so that the lights would come through on that. But you can see there the tiny little hole the, um, the impulse is going to come out. Before I put the saucer section together, I'm just uh, painting the red clear parts, Rebel Aqua Color, red clear 731 for the impulse engines. And for the impulse engines as well, the, the, the little uh, parts of plastic I'm showing you there, those are the backing plates for the uh, red um, clear parts. Because I'm lighting them, them up, these have to be removed. So I'm just taking them off with my snips, then I'm just sanding them down to the flat base of the model and then uh, touching the clear parts using the line of the plastic that I've taken off. There's a slight line still, so just use that as your guide. Now, uh, I had to add an extra um, strip of lights uh, for the impulse engines at the back. The light wasn't quite reaching it. So I just added a, another strip of three to go where, but there where you see my finger is. So I just um, soldered it up like I showed you before and then placed it in there. Put a little bit of super glue on this so the lights are standing up a little bit. And that should give me the direct light I need to go towards the impulse engine. So now I can get around to actually um, assembling the saucer section. So first to go in is the back panel for the warp um, impulse engines even. Now the fit wasn't brilliant here. Um, there is slight gaps so there will be um, a bit of filling need needing to be done. So I put it under a heavy F clamp uh, just to bring the parts together to see if I can em to eliminate the need for filler but in the end I still had to fill it up. So for the, the main assembly saucer section just a, a bead of glue around the rim and the contact points. It doesn't need a, a lot of glue and um, if you try and put it on evil as possible, try not to get anything on you on the holes where you've drilled as well. You don't want any glue seeping out and then it's a case of just marrying up the two parts together making sure that your wires out the way. I did drill a hole, I forgot to show you uh, on the bottom section, the saucer section, for the wires to pop through. Once that was all on, it was just time to clamp up. And once the clamps are on, just do your light test. I left the saucer section driving overnight, and uh, then it was time to put in the framework for the impulse engines. And then it was time to do a light test. Now you may have noticed the hole in, in the front in the front of the video there on your screen. That's uh, been partly assembled. That's going to be covered in the next part of the video, so I haven't left it out. I uh, once I've done the light test, uh, you can see um, some of the light bleed problems that I have. Um, so that's all going to have to be filled and taken care of. So right around the edge uh, of the rim of the saucer section, there's a tiny little gap. So I'm using Vlagio's plastic putty to uh, fill the gap in. So I'm just putting little globs uh, of this putty in, then spreading it with the cocktail stick and taking away any excess of just rubbing a, a paper towel over them. I carry on doing this all around the rim process, just putting it on, uh, then taking any excess off. Onto the paint and the sauce section and for the white I use um, a paint mixture that I done myself which was a just off white colour, a very light grey for the base. Then moved on to Rebel Aqua Colour Light Blue 49 and this colour is uh, predominantly the, the, the main contrast colour for the hull. And the pattern is really up to you, but uh, I just filled in 
the little sections on this. You can't really make it all on here. And the same for the underside here. There's one big uh, strip of the light blue colour going around the, the saucer section. With the outside markings of the top saucer section. I'm using Revo Aquacolor Grey Blue number 79. And um, th this colour is uh, the second contrast colour to go on. Next colour, I think these are the Phaser Banks. This is um, Lufthansa Yellow uh, Revo Aquacolor 310. Now there is decals for these uh, parts, but um, I decided just to paint them in because it's easier because of the dome shape on on the base uh, to get them flat. So uh, painting them is just the easier option than using a decal. So I painted the warp impulse engine uh, covers in Revo Aqua 79 and the little domes, a little dot of Revo Aqua Color 752 clear blue. And then I applied my varnish, which is pledge clear. And same again on the bottom, the saucer section. So it's the yellow for the phaser bars. And then I'm also putting in, using Revo Aqua Color 79, the grey bars that go in between. Well this brings part 2 and end part 1, part 2 will be concerning now. Check out other videos in my channel if you have time. But for now, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you again on the next part. Bye bye.